I can't believe Lashgate happened over a month ago now, and we're still talking about it because Michaela herself is still bringing it up. This week, Michaela kind of admitted to using falsies in her ad, and people aren't having it. I also want to talk about all the undisclosed ads happening on TikTok, specifically in the beauty community, and why creators aren't learning from Lashgate. It's a mess, so let's get into it. It's been over a month since Lashgate, and I think the fallout from that whole mess really changed how a lot of people saw the new TikTok beauty creators. If you've been around the beauty community for a while, you probably lived through the time when all the YouTubers were getting called out for their undisclosed ads and fake sponsorships. That time has now come for the TikTokers, but the only difference is, I feel like a lot of YouTubers actually learn from the people calling them out. A lot of the respected ones now only take sponsorships from the brands they actually loved and used, and they were always disclosed properly. They always had that verbal recognition that the video was sponsored, and then a written disclosure in the first line of the description box. But TikTokers aren't catching on to the rules, even after everything that's happened with Michaela. As you guys know, Michaela put that L'Oreal partner in super small font at the bottom of the screen for like 5 seconds, and then it just disappears and you miss that the video is actually sponsored. Putting hashtag L'Oreal partner in the tags isn't enough. Using the banner that TikTok provides you with isn't enough, and just taking the brand isn't enough. And we're still seeing all of that to this day. Michaela recently did a sponsorship with Makeup Forever, and the sponsorship isn't even disclosed in the video, and it's not disclosed in the description either. All she did was tag the brand, and then in the hashtags after pressing more, she used hashtag Makeup Forever Partner. And so at this point, I'm like, okay, are we all in the wrong and for some reason you just don't have to disclose on TikTok? Because I just don't understand how everyone is getting away with this. So I went on the FTC website and I was expecting like really small print that's super hard to read and understand, but they make it so straightforward. They literally have a guidebook for influencers and it's laid out in the most simple way. So I thought we could go through it together. The guidebook is called Disclosures 101 for Social Media Influencers. And it gets right into when you should disclose and it says, Disclose when you have any financial, employment, personal, or family relationship with a brand. Make sure people see and understand the disclosure. Place it so it's hard to miss. The disclosure should be placed with the endorsement message itself. Disclosures are likely to be missed if they appear only on the about me or profile page at the end of a post or videos or anywhere that requires a person to click more. Don't mix your disclosures into a group of hashtags or links. And that's where Michaela and so many other influencers are putting their disclosure. She did a sponsorship with ROC last month and all she did was tag the brand and put hashtag ROC partner in the tags after pressing more. I will say, she has started to put that paid partnership banner that TikTok provides, but according to the FTC, that's not enough. They have a whole section on these banners, and this is what it says. Don't assume that the platform's disclosure tool is good enough, but consider using it in addition to your own good disclosure. And I didn't know this, but when I was researching for this video, apparently TikTok actually does that for the influencers themselves now. I just wanted to come on and explain a little bit about the branded content banner that keeps coming up on videos. Anybody who links a product now on TikTok will have that paid partnership banner. Now that doesn't matter if they've bought the product with their own money, if they've been gifted the product by the company, or if they're actually getting paid to make the video by the company. There's lots of products that I'm promoting at the moment that I've purchased with my own money, but just adding that link so people can directly click to the product means that the paid partnership banner comes up. It's a bit annoying because I don't want you thinking that I'm getting paid to make all of these videos when I'm not. And it might come across that I could be lying about the product because I've been paid to promote it, but I haven't. But the new TikTok policies that came in in March means that anybody, everyone, big creators, small creators, anyone that links a product, it now says paid partnership. They're not the ones physically going in and putting up that paid partnership disclosure. It sounds like TikTok is doing it to save themselves. The guidebook even gives you examples of a good disclosure and what you should avoid doing. Simple explanations like thanks to blank brand for the free product are often enough if placed in a way that is hard to miss. So terms like advertisement, ad, and sponsored. 
On a space-limited platform like Twitter, the terms blank partner or blank ambassador are also options. It's fine, but not necessary, to include hashtags with a disclosure such as hashtag ad or hashtag sponsored. So if all these influencers like Michaela, for an example, put L'Oreal partner in the description on the first line or L'Oreal sponsorship and said in the video, thanks to L'Oreal for sponsoring this video, they'd be fine. Every sponsorship I see on TikTok these days is missing the audio disclosure, and I feel like that's a pretty big deal. The FTC has a whole section on this, and they say, if making an endorsement in a video, the disclosure should be in the video, not just in the description uploaded with the video. Viewers are more likely to notice disclosures made in both audio and video. Some viewers may watch without sound, and others may not notice superimposed words. And another big reason why the disclosure should be in the physical video is because let's say someone saved your sponsored video and reposted it or shared it with a friend. All those hashtags, the banner, the description, it's all gone. Forbes actually did a whole article on this and they call it a loophole for brands to get away with not disclosing content. It's possible that a majority of the TikTok videos being shared across other social media platforms are completely devoid of any clear signifier that they're paid promotions. They also say it puts both the influencer and the brand at risk for landing themselves in legal and financial risk with the FTC. And it's so true. I'm going to play you guys one of Michaela's recently improperly disclosed ads that I downloaded from a third party app and you're going to see if this was reposted anywhere, it would look like a normal, genuine review. Hey, the amount of comments telling me to try an eye balm because my under eyes are extremely dry. I mean, it makes sense. We put lip balm on our lips to keep them hydrated. Why not do the same thing under the eyes? Rock Multi Correction Revive and Glow Eye Balm. It has vitamin C in it, which I love. The packaging is so cute. It literally looks like a lip balm that you put under the eyes. Okay, essentially, what this says it's going to do is help with the puffiness under the eyes, dark circles. It's going to wake up the under eye, give it a nice glow. It's from Target, by the way. You know what else I like? It goes on clear, and you don't have to use your fingers. Like, all you got to use is this. No fingers needed. I'm obsessed with the fact that I don't have to use my fingers with this. All right, so you can immediately see the glow, and it, it feels very hydrating. This is, like, so easy to use. My under eyes look beautiful and beautiful under concealer. Another huge offender of this is Glamzilla. Glamzilla is the one who started that whole conversation about whether or not people trust TikTok influencers. Do you still trust TikTok beauty creators? And she ended up deleting her post when she didn't get the answers she was looking for. So many people replied to her TikTok saying they lost trust because of the sponsorships and them not being disclosed properly. So you would think that she would fix that, but no. She just did a sponsorship with Ula Henriksen, and all she did was throw up the banner and put hashtag Ula partner deep in her hashtags and after a long description, forcing you to press more to actually know it's sponsored. If someone just saved this video and shared it with you, you would have no idea that it was sponsored. I now have dark circles, which is super annoying. Okay, I'm gonna show you what I do. This is by Ula Henriksen. It's their banana bright color correcting stick. It's basically eye cream in a stick. And it has these light reflecting pigments that really illuminate your under eye instantly. See? See the difference? Then I apply some concealer, I stamp, and then I blend out like this. See the difference? So easy. Dark circles who? So Glamzilla is Canadian, so I'm not going to apply the FTC guidelines to her, but in Canada, we do have something called the ad standards, and we're a little bit different from the US. We do allow influencers to use hashtag whatever partner as proper disclosure, but it can't be hidden. And for video, it should be ideally verbal and written. This is what it has to say. If a creator uses a lot of hashtags slash mentions at the end of their content, the disclosure should always be prior to those hashtags slash mentions. If disclosures are buried in hashtag lists or are in overlays that are too small or faint, they could be considered hidden. Disclosures need to be clear and conspicuous. And I feel like that's most of Glamzilla's post. She normally doesn't do like a ton of hashtags, but it's always hidden after a long description. You have to press more. She also uses those quick overlays of small text that just disappear within seconds. And once again, clearly that's not enough. 
I will say she has started to use that paid partner banner, but as we just talked about, TikTok has apparently started applying that to videos themselves, and that's actually not enough again. They have a whole other write-up about this, and this is what they have to say. Social networks may require the use of their disclosure features, but those features should be used together with other disclosure best practices. This will also help ensure disclosures transfer to all platforms. And they even outline the rules specifically for video content, which says, in videos, disclosure should be upfront and identifiable. There is no guarantee that viewers will read, hear, or see a message unless it's presented prominently at the beginning of a piece. Disclose before the viewer needs to click more, in the first couple lines of the post. Context matters. Viewers should be able to see or hear the disclosure in context with the brand mention. Some mediums may require both visual and audio disclosures. Disclosures should be written, said, and or displayed somewhere it can be easily read, heard, or seen. It's just like, at the very least, let's put hashtag ad at the very beginning of your description box. If doing verbal disclosures is too much, I don't know why they just don't put it in the very first line of their description box, and I bet nobody would care. At this point, it feels like they're trying to deceive people because everyone has been calling them out on this and they're still not learning. But moving on from all of that, we need to talk about Michaela admitting to Lashgate. Last week, Michaela did a video where she did her mom's makeup, and at one point during the video, she references the Lashgate situation. And would it be a Michaela look without this infamous combo, the L'Oreal telescopic lift in a pair of Adele Wispies? And tons of people in the comments think this is her admitting to Lashgate, writing, at least she kind of admitted to using those Ardell lashes. Is she admitting to mascara gate? But now Michaela is once again denying it. Someone commented under the video and said, excuse me, the way you subtly drop the truth about the telescopic mascara. And Michaela responded and said, no, I'm trolling. And now people are reacting to the video, and a lot of them think that Michaela is going way too far. She already got away with it, and yet she keeps bringing it up, almost kind of like antagonizing her audience. And would it be a Michaela look without this infamous combo, the L'Oreal telescopic lift in a pair of Adele? Okay, honestly, I wasn't going to say anything about this. Like, this just, honestly, it's going too far. I feel like... You already got away with it. People still love you and you kind of just let it go right over and you kind of left like unfazed, which is great for you. But at what expense to then go and kind of joke about lying to the people that support you? That's just where it kind of bothers me because as a micro beauty influencer myself, it just makes it to where all of the rest of us have to really like prove that we're being honest when me personally, I always am honest with the people that I share stuff that I love with. I don't want anybody spending their money on something that doesn't genuinely work and that I don't genuinely love. Yes, sometimes things work for me and don't work for other people. However, you just openly joking about lying is like, come on, man, like, you gotta stop like while you're ahead. And the people in the comments of this video all agree. And many of them said that they unfollowed Michaela for good after that whole situation. I unfollowed her the moment she didn't address it. Now she's literally mocking it. When people don't respect the platforms they were given is sad. I unfollowed her over the mascara situation. And this confirms I made a wise choice. But that's not the only thing Michaela is being called out for this week. I guess with all this Haley and Selena drama going around, a lot of Rare Beauty reviews have started to make their way back to people's For You pages, and people noticed something odd with Michaela's review. Last year, Michaela reviewed the Rare Beauty liquid blushes, and she loved them. She said they looked great. She said they were so easy to blend. Okay, so how I like to apply these is put one little dot right there, and then I'll use a sponge. And I like to first diffuse the pigment out and then I'll sort of buff and blend. Super easy. See how every day of a color that is, it goes perfectly with the lips. And I love to top it off with the liquid illuminator. I just put a little bit right on top. And I use a sponge again. And look how pretty. Yeah, I'll be rocking this for every day. It's so natural. It's so beautiful. This is a great color just for every day. If you like a little bit of blush, you can build it up too. Yet now Michaela is saying these blushes aren't even in her top five. 
In January, Michaela posted a video saying they were super hard to blend and she prefers other blushes. I feel like this is such an unpopular opinion, but the Rare Beauty liquid blushes aren't even in my top five. <laughs> I like them, but I, I, the Melton blushes are in my top five. The Melton blushes are phenomenal, fantastic, love them. Okay, so from what I recall, you only need this much. And from also what I recall, you need to like blend them immediately. <laughs> Otherwise, you're screwed. But I, don't hate me, but I find them hard to blend, okay? Like it gets there eventually, but I have blushes that take me two seconds to blend. And sure, you're allowed to change your mind, but how do you go from telling your audience they're so easy to apply and blend, and then next year say you don't like them because they're so hard to blend? It doesn't take multiple tries to know how a product blends. And even if it did, Michaela has posted multiple reviews on that blush, and in every single one, she says how much she loves it and how easy it is to blend. I got two of the liquid blush because this was what I was most excited about. I'm going to use shade Bliss. Just put in a little, and then Selena just taps it in. Oh, it blends in so easy. Look at how pretty that is. That was everything I hoped it'd be. Obsessed. And now people are like, was she sponsored? Or was she trying to get sponsored and lying about how much she loved them? Or was she just trying to get reposted on the Rare Beauty TikTok page? And yeah, you're allowed to change your mind, but a lot of people think it's happening way too often with her. I mean, we already saw her do this with that got to be brow gel, and some people have theories on why she does it. The main theory that people have is that she posts these glowing reviews in hopes to get sponsored, or for the video to be bought by the brand and turned into an ad. Pretty much what Manny talked about, and if it doesn't, she ends up trashing the product. Now, I don't know if that's true. She honestly could have just changed her mind. Like at this point, who knows with her, but those are just the theories going around right now. Finally, we have to talk about Michaela getting called out by a brand, but this time I'm actually kind of siding with Michaela. So Michaela posted this first impression video of a nose contouring tool that went viral on TikTok. All the videos show this person placing the tool on their nose, they apply their makeup, and when they take it off, they have this amazing, beautiful, perfectly placed contoured nose. So when Michaela tried it and did exactly what the video did, she quickly realized the viral video was missing a step. I'm a skeptic. I, I don't think this is gonna work. I'm gonna try it, but perfect nose contour every time with just this, I don't know. Let's give it a try. Time for the reveal. <laughs> I don't, I, I, I'm not. Okay, if I did it wrong, tell me in the comments. I mean, I feel like it's obvious that that tool is just to get the base down and then you're supposed to take it off and blend it. But to be fair, the viral video doesn't show that step. The owner replied to Michaela's video and she showed her how it's done. Michaela, you look stunning. Mm, thank you so much for trying the nose tool, but I'm going to explain what you need to do after the step that you revealed the product. So this is the nose tool and you want to apply it right on the nose like this. If you're going to apply contour here, you want to lower the nose tool like here. You can use cream contour highlight or powder and you just buff it out like this. So you did that part right you have to blend it further. You are not gonna get more product on the brush, you're just gonna start blending it out, making sure to focus where you put the lines. And now Michaela fans are under that video being like, okay, well, why didn't you show this step in your videos? One person said, so if you have to blend after removing, why don't you do that in any of the videos that I watch when the thing is removed? And the owner was replying back to some people explaining that those kind of like shocking reveal videos are the ones that do well on the For You page. But now people are calling it deceptive advertising. I personally think that it's pretty obvious that you have to blend. And I think this is just a tool that's probably helpful for beginners who need a guideline. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think about everything down below. How do you feel about all the undisclosed beauty sponsorships on TikTok? Do you think the FTC will actually end up cracking down on all of them? Or do you think they're just gonna keep getting away with it? Also, let me know what you think about Michaela's response to Lashgate and the whole situation with the Rare Beauty blush. Do you think it's yet another example of Michaela lying in hopes to get sponsored? Or do you think she genuinely changed her mind? Let me know and I'll see you next time.